Hello, it's John Vince Fisherman. Today, I'm going to be working on this old. It's a pin 85. It's got a cracked spool. Somebody's tried to glue it. Got a big chunk missing out of it there. Okay. It's on a steel rod. I don't know if you can really tell. That's a square steel rod. Beautiful shape. Let me turn it around. Hard to do this with my camera, but here at the workbench, but still got a still got a swivel on it. <laughs> it's a steel rod. Get it all the way to the to the grips here if I can. Look at these grips. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let me flip it around again. Hopefully not hit my phone. I, I do all my recording on the phone. So I got this thing from a friend. It was his father's. And you can tell the lines, somebody didn't know what they were doing there. I don't run the line out of those like that. So, you know, it's got the crack spool. So I reached out to my pin buddies and uh, they they took care of me. Uh, one of my pin friends sent me another 85 with a good spool. I'm going to use this reel for parts and fix that reel. So I need the spool out of it. And today I'm going to tear this one down and clean up the parts. I'll put the reel back together other than the spool. So I'll just need another, you know, if I run into another, another 85 somewhere, I'll, I'll pick it up and maybe I'll find one of the smashed side plate needs, it has a good spool in it and I can use that. So We'll stop talking and start working. <laughs> I got, like I said, I got to get the parts out of this one to fix that one. I'll get these parts cleaned up and put up, and then I'll do another segment of the video on tearing that one down and putting it back together, cleaning the rod up, and all that good stuff. I plan on pulling that line back off of there and then put it back on to this spool when I put it back together. So that's my plan. I don't know if there's any uh, monetary significance to that, that reel. Uh, I kind of doubt it. But it, it's, it's special because I've I bought it from a friend who was special to him. So it's special to me. He was downsizing his life. We're all at that age, I guess. Or, and with the economic times as they are, we're having to do more with less. And uh, he's kind of in the same situation. So look at that nastiness in that thing. But that's, that's the part I need off of this reel. Is that one right there? that spool so I'm tempted to just put this thing back together and put it in a parts bag and come back to it at a later date I think I'll do that there's no point in cleaning these parts up now they're well protected so we're gonna we're gonna save it for later enjoyment Two of those screws were short, and I think I just put one of them in the wrong place. I did. Get two short ones in the stand. The reason for that is so you don't protrude through and catch your line. Does that make sense? I don't want to catch it all. 
seems to be about a half a hole off. There it goes. It was really nice of uh, the guys in the pin reel page come through for me. I asked for help to find a spool for it that matched. And I had one, one sitting on my front stoop about three days later, this reel here. And um, that's that's really nice of the community, to, the pin reel community to come together like that. Good people. And, and this, this reel here, you know, if I see somebody on there that needs a part, that this reel's got on, I'll help them out the same way. Whatever's left of it is available to anybody else. It's pay forward. Okay. Well, that will go be put up for parts. This will get cleaned up with the other reel. I'll be back in just a few with this other reel ready to tear down. I'm back. This is kind of like part two of three part on, on this reel. Um, really a shame that spool is in such bad shape. It's a modeled spool. This one is just a brown spool, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it nice and pretty anyway like the green handle, you know, it's close to St. Patrick's Day here, so why not? Let's take this thing apart. Oh. I've already got the spool. This spool here will go in the trash. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. It's, uh, it's done. screws out when I say modeled um, that's M-O-T-T-L-E-D uh, some of these older pins had a kind of like a marbling look to them in a dark brown color. And uh, this one is one of those, the spool and the side plates. Now, unfortunately, the spool we'll put in here is more just of a, of a brown. But, uh, uh, you know, it was given to me. And I appreciate that, that fellow collector who let me have one out of his part stash to put on reel. You can see where it was tried to be repaired. It's just a real shame. It's got a chip missing out of it. And, and uh, well, here's what you do when you got one like that. Whoops, I missed the trash can. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't play basketball very well. But anyway, that's what you do to them because there's really nothing else you can do. Um, it's just a scrap part. Okay, let's take this side of the reel part here. Finally got out last weekend, did some fishing. Man, it was fun. It was just so fun. It caught some nice trout. And, um, really needed that. First, first fishing trip of the year was very successful. That's a that's a good sign. It's either going to go really good the rest of the year or I'm not going to catch anything. 
But anyway, I think it's a pretty good sign that we're going to have a good, good fishing season around here. We're, we seem to be getting uh, about average rainfall and stuff, so. This one has a cold spring anti-reverse dog. Some of them have a little like a brass looking lever on it. Let's just kind of lay all this stuff out as I pull it off of here. I don't know how old this reel is. I don't think it's super old, but that rod it's with is definitely old. That's uh that's a given. There's the gear, looks good. All the washers look beautiful. I don't see anything wrong with them. We're going back with this washer set. A little bit of cows. Got a washer on here. It's got a little bit of it's got a little bit of wear. Take it off of there. Now we'll try to push that pin out. So, I am slowly switching over my editing program. Right now I'm using a um, power editor. And this weekend when we went fishing, I tried to use, well, I tried to use power editor and that didn't work. It wouldn't support the size of my files. And uh, you know, we just drove that pin out with the proper size punch. which doesn't want to come back out for some reason. And there's that pin. We'll get it out of here somehow or another. I need to file on that a little bit when I get it out. Let's just file on it here since it doesn't want to come out of there. Sometimes they, when you punch on them, they mushroom a little bit on the end. They'll go through the hole. They won't come back out of it. So you got to give them a little bit of help. Just go around it, put a little chamfer on the end of that punch. That'll get that mushroom off of there. It should slip right out. There we go. Yep, this was very dry very very dry okay we'll work this jack plate off of here and so anyway back to my software issues um it i, I couldn't i couldn't upload any videos uh, nervous moments there ended up having to use uh gopro quick which is in my opinion about the most worthless <laughs> video editing program in the world so uh not real happy with how that went and uh i got it done but it just wasn't very pretty so, but we made some videos and finally finally got out of the house on a weekend it wasn't raining that's the amazing thing it wasn't raining all right and the wind wasn't blowing 500 miles an hour so we got to get out and enjoy the beautiful mountains of Virginia so check that video out it was quite fun my girlfriend um, her first time fishing, she uh, she did really well. She she I started her out on an underspin, you know, kind of like a, a push, kind of like a push button reel that goes underneath your 
because underneath your rod, more like a spinning rod. I kind of wanted to step her into a spinning setup, and I learned really quick that uh, I knew she was a good athlete, and uh, she was uh, she, she she picked it up really quick, and uh, I advanced her on to uh, a spinning reel pretty quickly, and she did fine. She she excelled so. Um, can't ask for any better outcome of a fishing trip than that. And uh, she caught she caught the first four fish before I ever caught one. We lost she lost one of those. And uh, so I finally caught a couple myself. Uh, you know, it was the day was about her. Her dad was a BASS tournament fisherman way back 70s and 80s. We're talking about the early days of, of BASS and then she was a big part of that. His preparation, his team, his home team to get the while he was out working each week, get the boat cleaned up and sorted out, ready to go back out on the water on the weekends when he was was competing and um she didn't get to fish a whole lot when she was a kid, if, if any at all. And uh, I think she has a an absolute uh, love for it. And I'm looking really forward to uh, to teach her what I know about it. And uh, so it's going to be a, a, a in interesting summer full of uh, firsts, you know, first bass, first bluegill, first she's had her first trout. First catfish, maybe first ocean fish. We will definitely be getting to the ocean um, within the next month or two. Maybe for some bottom fishing to start out, maybe some drum. And then as as the summer comes in and the pelagic start their way up the coast, uh, I'm all about those kingfish. And I'll be uh, I'll be ready for those bad boys. I love fishing for them. And. Uh, well, I'm going to get this reel cleaned up. I'll be back. It seems to be in very good shape. And uh, it's going to be a nice one. So stay tuned. Well, this is John. I'm back. I've uh, got this old PN85 uh, cleaned up. ready to go back together here it's not beautiful I uh, didn't think it would be when it was done it's got a lot of um, oxidation it's missing some chrome but uh, it's okay we're gonna we're gonna make it a reel that it's more for display uh, you know I've got this on this old uh, it's a metal rod really don't know what else to call it other than that it is what it is uh, I, <laughs> I really don't know much history on the metal rods I'm still trying to figure it out but from what I understand they kind of came about after the war possibly so let's get that one started maybe Your short screws go in the stand on pin almost, I would say, all the time. So if you ever uh, putting one back together and you can't remember, just remember what I said. I always put the short screws in the stand. Why do they do that? Well, I'll show you here in just a second. Put the short screws in the stand so they don't protrude, protr protrude through the stand. This is a real foot, but can cause it to stand and catch the line and cause a problem. A little grease on the bait clicker help that slide a little better. We've got four. 
uh, posts here, crossbars, whatever you want to call them. They're grungy, not gonna lie, they're not pretty. I put a little bit of grease in them just so those screws will never be hard to get out. They'll always come out. go through and get them all started. And you can go back and tighten them down. You heard me pause there, and the reason being, this 85 has four posts, but look how they're arranged. You got a low one on this side and high ones on It's not a left hand reel, it's a right hand reel. It's got, it's odd. I've never noticed that on a pin reel before, but it's got more posts back here where your thumb rides. Huh. Interesting. You might have to ask somebody about that. Someone who knows more than me. That's an 85 also. All right. Stick our spool back in there. We'll put that aside for a minute. We'll go ahead and, before I forget it, start putting things back together without some grease, and we'll put some grease on it. Let's build this thing. Some grease right here where the bushing, or pin actually calls it a bearing, goes on it. And I still got my socket on the wrench here. Go ahead and grease up where the selector free spool lever goes on. That wants to be aggravating. Let's fix that. If you put a little dab of grease on that, just the elbow of that uh, wire, it will stick a little bit long. Well, dadgummit, I just can't get the line up today. All right, it'll stick just a little bit longer for you to get it in here and kind of get it lined up. Screwdriver always winds up back in there. Picking up after myself, I guess. And we're going to put that spring back under that post right there. It's not really a post, but you know what I'm talking about. I put the lever on backwards, catch just enough of that selector shaft, and pull it around. Kind of find a little balance there, a little dab of grease, put the lever on the correct way with the knob towards the spool, and you got a screw. No, that's the wrong screw. I'll get the right one here in a second. You got a screw that goes on there. Good grief. Everything wants to slide away from me here. All right. So that's ready 
we can go ahead and put the put the yoke and the pinion gear on. Set that right there for a second. Well, let's do it like this. All right, and some grease on the pinion gear. It'll get worked in. You don't have to put like tons of it on there. It'll work itself in pretty good. And you got the two springs, the large springs. They go on there. Then your yoke. The yoke goes with the, the gear open side towards the main gear. Okay. Now, some grease in here. And look, most all your pins are made like this. If you can build one pin, a senator, your you know, jig masters, squitters, they're all pretty close. If you can build one of them, you, know, you can build a hundred of them. So you, the the internationals and some of those are different, but uh, okay. What I do. much spring tension. We'll leave it just like that, okay? Now, got this little bitty pin that has to go in here. This this shaft is old, not greased, okay? So, kind of get it started, put you some oil down in it. Fill it up pretty good. A little oil down here, never hurt. Perfect. Take your pin, push back in there, See there where the pin goes? And that locks that shaft in. I'll show you that real quick. Let me get that back out of there. Took the pin back out. So see this, this groove right here lines up where the pin hole is. You put that in there, that pin goes through there and locks it in to that groove. The pin, the, the pin itself is captured by the drag stack, the gear, and all that stuff. So, all right, just just going down the the list here of things. I will use a little cows just to keep this thing, give it a chance to be smooth. All right, you got that that. Uh, fiber washer goes on then your main gear gets some grease once again it's going to get spread around pretty good pretty quickly so I'll put it on there okay The fiber washers are leather, and uh, they kind of rolled up a little bit. So I don't. I may have could have should have just not put them in the cleaner and cleaned them up, but I think they'll be fine. Put a fiber washer in, and then you're going to put a keyed washer. And we'll use it to slide that fiber washer on there so it goes on nice and even and smooth. Okay. And you get another, I say fiber, they're leather. I'm not sure why I'm saying fiber. And they're very, very, very dry. Almost brittle. Um, this cows will soak into them and loosen them back up. They'll be fine. Put that on. Then you get your eared washer. And it goes down and there's two little cutouts that the ear washer goes down into like that. And your last leather washer. Soak it down good with cows. When that cow soaks up in there, they will be like brand new. And then your last keyed washer. 
push it down in there where it's stacked good and tight. I do believe I may get this wrong, but I believe that went to the inside, then the sleeve. We'll try it. Over here, you've got this little bitty spring in your anti-reverse dog. You're thinking, well, how are you going to get that in there? Well, I'm going to show you. Take one of your screws with the all threads, put it in this bottom hole right there like that. Okay? Take your bridge, put it in like this, rotate it around. Yeah, I'll have to put that in later. Go ahead and put your anti-reverse dog in there, where it's like that. Get you a, I put a little clump of grease just to keep that spring from going crazy on me. This spring, if you lose it, uh, you're going to pay about $3 for that little booger, okay? Rotate your bridge around and start that screw. Now, the all thread screws go to the two lower holes. Gotta get it lined up. Your two screws with the short set of threads go through those springs up here on top. If you put the all threads up here, your reel will hang up on you. When you go to take it in or out of gear, it will hang up, and you will not be happy with it. Okay. All right, now, once I get that done, I always give this a good coat of grease right here because that slides on and off, or back and forth underneath the bridge. So it's your jack plate pushes the yoke down, which disengages the spool, and it's sliding underneath the bridge, okay? We'll go ahead and put that on. Your star drag goes on next. On the star drag, some of them have numbers. This one does not. But if it had numbers, it will go on with the numbers down towards the, the main gear. And let me hold this thing here. Now, I'm not gonna put the handle on it yet. Smooth, very smooth, okay. Good deal. All right, a little bit of oil on your shaft there. And something else I did not do. I need to put some oil down in that bearing, put it back in there. That'll make it nice and steady. Yeah, you'll be able to cast 200 yards with it, right? I'm being, I'm being facetious. Okay, once we get to this point, your two shortest screws, there again, go into your stand. Go ahead and put them in there. Once you get them lined up, the rest of it is pretty simple. There's one in, and that one's not wanting to track in there. Hmm. Well, I think that's something. There it goes. I'll go ahead and tighten those down. Then your other four screws will go into the posts. They should be lined up. I still have the line, <coughs> excuse me, during pollen. <sighs> I still have the line that came off this reel and I'm gonna put it back on it. It's like a string, I don't know what the heck it is. I don't know anything about old lines.
I have not cleaned the uh, rod up yet. <coughs> okay. <coughs> A little bit of grease down in the hole for that screw. Um, handle's a little tight. Let's put some oil in there. Put your handle on. Tighten the retaining screw down. This is before they started using the locks. It's an older reel. Somebody out there in Penland can uh, post up a comment as to how old you think it is. It does have a number, part number on the base or the stand or the foot um, all right needs to be adjusted that's too much play okay you gotta remember this spool did not come with this this reel so there it is there is a pin 85 It will go back on the rod. The line will go back on it, and it will be a nice display piece. I doubt it will ever see the water, at least as long as I own it. But maybe uh, when I pass it down to one of my kids, they'll take it out and fish with it. Who knows? There it is. Nice and smooth. Yeah, let's see if we, how the drags feel got a lot of drag to it but those washers are a little rough yeah they'll be okay well anyway that's uh that's a pin 85 off a really old steel rod and it like i said it'll get cleaned up here it is i haven't cleaned it let's clean it up before i say goodbye Give the seat a little bit of oil or grease or actually penetrating oil. Don't see any markings on the seat. <clears throat> the rest is a rod. I'm going to spray this rag down with the WD-40 and just wipe it down see what it does for that wood look the wood was dirty Like I said, I'm not really set up good here at this workbench to uh, do too much with rods. I'm in a corner of a room, so <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll do what we can with the space we have. I'll be moving my workshop soon. It won't be here at this house sometime this summer. Anyway, there it is. Beautiful old rod. I mean, it's, it's obviously it's made out of steel. Let's go back this way. It's been used. It's been in the salt water. It's got enough corrosion and pitting to, to prove that point. There it is. Pin 85 on a metal fishing rod with two guides and a tip and a wooden handle that looks to be hand carved. Uh, if I had to guess I'd say it's hand carved. So, thank you all for watching. Please uh, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel.
Uh, I'm really enjoying doing these videos, and I really enjoy doing the fishing videos, and there'll be more of that. We're going to try to hit one big fishing trip a month to somewhere and uh, bring you back some content. Thanks for watching. This is John Vince Fisherman. See you on the next video.